How much longer do you think you'll be, Mrs. Scott? I should very much like to see you. I'm terribly sorry, Mark. Yes, sir. Who's in there with your mistress? Oh, sir. It's the doctor, sir. Doctor? What doctor? What's he doing here? Oh, sir. He come because Bill inspected him. What for? The mistress, sir. She's hurting her ankle. Oh. Is that what you were trying to tell me when you knocked on the door? Yes, sir. Might have been a great deal worse. When Billings came to see me, I was inclined to think your accident was very serious. Dearest, what happened? Have you hurt yourself badly? Darling, it's nothing. I just tripped. And Billings rushed out and fetched Dr. Gribble. Dr. Gribble, this is my husband, as you probably guessed. Delighted to make your acquaintance, Mr. Corte. How do you do, Doctor? Is the injury serious? Well, sir, I think I may venture the opinion that the patient will live through the night. No, sir. It's merely a sprained ankle. Nothing to worry about at all, I assure you. Well, darling, I should be quite all right in just a few days. Don't worry, you shan't have to carry me on board. My wife's referring to the fact that we leave here in a couple of weeks, Doctor. On the first of the month, we're sailing for the Orient. Oh, me, I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry? I think it's the most wonderful thing that ever happened. Uh, doubtless, Mom. But you perhaps don't realize how rare it is to find new and charming neighbors in a rustic community like this. Oh. Criminology. <laughs> Are you interested in criminology, Mr. Cortez? Yes. It's a sort of hobby of mine, Doctor. Well, we're a fellow enthusiasts, then. Yes, I think it's a horrid, morbid pastime. But fascinating, Mrs. Cortez. Yes, a great favorite of mine. Criminals and their mentality. That's great psychology. And, bless my soul, in the latest issue of Medical Jurisprudence in the Criminal. <laughs> I should have thought I was the only person within a hundred miles radius that ever so much as heard of this publication. Really? I've subscribed to it for years. Let's see, did I read this issue? Oh, yes. This is the one with that account of the South American Carrera. It's a very interesting case. I don't believe I've read it. You should have. This fellow Carrera was a professional wife murderer. They caught him after he completed his third crime. And then he was drowned trying to escape. Oh, yes, I remember. They never found the body, did they? No, as a matter of fact, they didn't. <laughs> I don't think there's any real doubt he's dead. You never can tell. I think it's dreadful that a man like that might still be alive. It's funny. I can't find the illustration. Illustration? <coughs> what illustration, Doctor? Uh, there was a picture of Carrera, a pencil sketch done by some journalist who saw him captured. Don't you remember it? No, I don't. Excuse me. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Doctor. There wasn't any illustration. Uh, with all due respect, Mr. Cortez, I'm almost positive there was. I remember I was interested because it showed Carrera with a beard. Oh, and are beards particularly absorbing to you, Doctor? Well, only when related to the crime of wife murder. You see, it, it happened to occur to me how many famous wife killers, or infamous wife killers, have been bearded. <laughs> Take Bluebeard, for instance, huh? <laughs> well, now that I come to think of it, you're probably right, Doctor. Perhaps they grow beards and then shave them off so they won't be recognized later on. Why, Cecily, you've missed your vocation. You should have been a detective. Yes, well, I should never have been a doctor. <laughs> Here I am chatting with a dozen more visits to make. I really must be going. Now, Mrs. Cortez, remember, just keep the bandage on and don't put too much weight on the foot for a couple of days. Yeah. Thank you very much, Doctor. I'll walk out to your carriage with you. Oh, Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Strange case of Vasco Carrera. I thought you didn't like that sort of thing. I don't. Well, why read it then? 